While it's important that employers are aware of and understand the issues of family caregivers in their workforce, it's critical for them to provide the kinds of supports that will keep their employees healthy and productive in order to reduce the staggering costs of lost productivity. One of the things we've done is we have a weekly bulletin, news bulletin that comes out for our agency. We've provided information in there like the elder care locator phone number. So if somebody doesn't know where to turn, there it is. We've provided articles on caregiving issues in that newsletter as well. In addition, we've provided classes that are over the noon hour so employees can not miss out on work but get away for 45 minutes or an hour to learn about how to get support for caregiving. We've advertised respite care services for them. We've even uh, provided a program. We did a four-part education program at the end of the workday. So that started at 4 or 4.30 and went till 5.30 or 6, I think. And then employees could not miss any work, come at the end of their day and get support as well as some education for their caregiving situations. I think that what I'd like employers to know is that without a lot of effort on their part, there are things that they could do that would truly support their employees with caregiving issues. There are classes that could be brought into the workplace by a, a few simple contacts with your aging community to bring those resources in. There um, are flexibility and policies that could be provided that would provide employees a lot of room to attend to their people that they're caregiving for. So without lots of effort on the part of the employer, you can provide a lot to employees that would really help them to manage both their work and their caregiving issues. So it's, it really makes sense for us to provide the tools so we can keep those people in our workplace as long as possible. It's very costly to replace employees. And in many cases, we don't even have that flexibility to replace employees anymore. With the downsizing of the workforce, if an employee leaves, they might not be replaced. So we want to keep them in the workplace as long as possible. Some of our best trained, most knowledgeable employees are the ones who are older, who are having caregiving issues. And if they leave, a lot of knowledge walks out the door. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about some of the challenges that I'm having. Zach is the human resources manager for a medium-sized insurance business. People are, are, are who we have. People is, is all we have uh, in terms of, of what we do. People is the differentiator of what we do. And it's how we treat our employees that's going to impact their performance with our customers. But I think if we show commitment to our employees and in this manner in the form of, of caregivers and supporting them, we get commitment in return. And if we're able to extend a hand, show them that they're will we're willing to help, we're willing to cr get creative to find uh, a solution that is going to help them in their, in their time of need and is going to help us be able to continue to serve our customers and, and do the work that we need to do. It potentially creates, uh, it's going to create a win-win situation, but it potentially creates even longer term benefits because the employee remembers that I was, when, in, my, in my biggest time of need, the employer was here to help me. We do a lot of different things to help support that message, to send that message. Um, we do training for our managers um, to help them be prepared in, in different situations. Um, we, because it, our managers are often the conduit or are the, the uh, link between the employee and the company. And it's in their day-to-day -day interactions and conversations when life issues come out. And when that life issue comes out, it's how we respond to that. Is it, ooh, or is it, I'd like to lend a helping hand. I'd like to find out more about that. What can we do to support? How can we help? I, I think each situation in how we provide for a caregiver needs to be unique in that there's no one-size-fits-all or this is our program. Um, and I think that's where it allows us to provide um, a win-win situation for our employees is when we understand their specific needs and we identify the solutions specifically for them. 
Well, Diane, it's nice to see you again. Jeff is the director of an employee assistance program for a state agency. I do believe employers have certain responsibilities to provide support for caregivers. So <clears throat> those responsibilities would lie in the area of they have a legal responsibility regarding the Family Medical and Leave Act. Um, they also have an ethical responsibility to be uh, you know, to, you know, show that they care about the well-being of their employees. It's also a uh, responsibility based on smart business practice so that if they uh, have a reasonable response to someone's request for, let's say, a flexible schedule or something so that they can still get their job done but also care for their uh, family member or other responsibility, then they have a happier and more productive employee. And I feel that there is a culture of wanting to work with people to keep them productive and happy and therefore try to work with them, particularly in terms of flexible scheduling. And that's a more informal arrangement between a supervisor and employee, so shifting their work hours I think it's in the best interest of employers to provide as much assistance as they can within a reasonable limit to caregivers because it's the humane thing to do for one thing. But secondly, from a business perspective, uh, if you have a productive employee, uh, it's much better to retain that person uh, and to try to work with them with, within the short-term personal issue that they're dealing with as a caregiver than to lose that good employee. And uh, in the long run, it's, it's more cost effective to retain a valued employee than to go out and try to hire and train a new employee into a position.